you know, and the racial disparities in our elections go well beyond the 1994 race. You know, with Tony Williams, uh, you know, when he ran, he was uh, when he made that surprise announcement he was going to move UDC to Ward 8 or something like that without consulting anyone. He had trouble with the racial in the, in the post polls. Uh, Sharon Pratt Kelly, who, who was a big favorite in 1990, had a lot of problems in 1994. I mean, we've had these racial disparities for some time, and that's what Vince Gray says he wants to try to address. But I would like to ask the mayor, Mayor Barry, about this, knowing that what the Ward Three, Ward Eight uh, contrast. Uh, what do you think about the fact that eighty percent of the voters in Ward Three, mostly white voters, voted against Vince Gray and his performance last night? You weren't there, but you've probably read about it and heard about it. He did a pretty good job. I mean, what do you know about Vince Gray that those nervous white voters uh, should hear? Well, let me just say that in terms of the election, going back to Kojo's analysis of it, he puts it on race. Uh, this city was racially polarized before I even came to Washington in 1965. It is still racially polarized. It is geographically polarized, but more importantly, it's economically polarized. A white family, 101000 black family, $39,000. I didn't create that racial uh, polarization. What happened, Tom, in my administration, I got 47% of the white vote in my first time out. But as I began to govern, the programs that I advocated appealed more to the needs of black people and not to the needs of white people. Take, take, take job training, for instance. In the white community, I get the impression that you don't need a government-sponsored job development program. You don't need subsidized housing. You don't need social services. Very few white people send, out, send their kids to educational, to, to uh, D.C. public schools. And so the programs I advocated, people could see and feel them, but the programs that white people would want to get involved in, you couldn't necessarily see and feel. Now, for instance, Betty King used to tell me who you knew. That Had people, dinner with her less than a month yeah, ago. People in War Three are interested in taxes, trees, Traffic, police, trash, crime, uh, and, 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 and crime and good government. And so that's what made the difference in the election. But let's look Asian forward. Let's go forward. Do, let me give you an example. I know, but it, I want you to tell people what you think about Vince Gray, about how he's going to be not I, a just a Ward 7 or a Ward 8 person, but a citywide person. But, I, I know, mean, it, should I they know. be fearful of him? No, no. And why not? No. See, see the Washington Post has, has sort of perpetuated this myth that walk, that vision Gray is this monster out here, uh, like Marion Bear the monster, uh, as opposed to someone who cares deeply about this community, as I do. You know, I want everybody to flourish in this community. Vince Gray does too. Vince Gray spent all of his adult life working for people at DCARC. He and I both depopulated Forest Haven. He's a sensitive person. He's a, a caring kind of person. Uh, he was he, he integrated a white fraternity at George Washington when it wasn't popular to do so with, with Herb Miller and others. And so the Post and Kojo Nami are to stop perpetuating that myth that they have to be fearful of Vincent Gray. Now, Gray has announced mm -hmm. that Tony Williams and, and um, Alice Rivlin, who ran the control board for a while, that both of them have joined his transition team. Is that a kind of a way to tell people not to be so nervous? No, so we are getting the best experts you can get. Alice Rivlin was the OMB director uh, in, in, in the Clinton administration. Uh, Tony Williams, former mayor. Uh, he's asked a number of other people for the expertise. And so you ought to stop that, that he's making an effort to bridge the gap by appointing these kinds of people. He wants the best expert advice he can get to make this city. This city is difficult to manage. Uh, the problem with Adrian Fenty uh, is that he never stopped running for office. And stopped talking and, to people. And stopped, you know, et cetera. So what, what Vincent Gray is doing is pointing on all of us who have expertise. There's no way you could not want to know what Anthony Williams thinks about. There's no way you want to think about what Marion Barry thinks about 16 years of being mayor. I didn't get to be that mayor because of my name. I got it because of my service, because I met the needs of a lot of people. Everybody in this city, black or white, indirectly or directly has been touched by Marion Barry in a positive way. 
In case you're just joining us, our, our guest is Marion Barry. He's a member of the D.C. City Council. He's a Democrat who represents Ward 8. He's also the former mayor of the district. Tom Sherwood is our resident analyst. He's a reporter at NBC4 and a columnist for the current newspapers. We're inviting your calls at 800-433-8850. Let's go to Farzad in Washington, D.C. Farzad, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Kojo. I'm fond of your program, and I would like to say... I have been in D.C. area since 1970s, and I'm very fond of Mr. Barry, regardless of the personal problem. He has done a great job for not only African American in Washington, D.C., but for everybody. And I just wanted to tell him that uh, I'm uh, really uh, you know, glad that uh, he's still in the political scene, and uh, good luck, Mr. Barry. Thank you very much. I wish you'd tell, uh, you, he heard it, Kojo, uh, to stop perpetuating these myths that I was an awful mayor. Well, you did some awful wait things, minute, but you were a person. I mean, you <laughs> did, well, personally, that's true, but you yeah. did some good things. I mean, the no. Verizon Center would not have been built. It was it was dead in the water. You got with, with Apo and built the, the city spent a lot of money. It wasn't here? Just, he is flacking for another. No, I'm just saying the again. truth <laughs> is, but you know, your personal problems and the. Troubles in the government and the Virgin Islands, stuff, all that stuff was was bad stuff. But I have, it's not was, a it's not a either or. It's a both. But in all those cases, Tom, take the Vista. The government spent fifteen million dollars on trying to entrap. Well, me. we have well, never gotten a budget well, well, on that. Some people say forty five. Some but say the, fifteen. The reality the reality was nine of the twelve jurors wanted to absorb me of all charges. The same thing is true with the Secret Service stopped me in front of the White House. That was, I was acquitted. So I'm saying when you look at all of that, it's more of a media. Well, I, I do think that your personal yeah, failings, yeah, yeah. your personal failings yeah. did affect some of your government decisions. So I'm, there's no question about so. that. But I would I would say, you know, there are, you know, I've written many of the things you've done well, but I mean, there is a list of what makes people nervous of, 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 that and you're so friendly with with Vince Gray, and that's why they were worried about him. Well, you Vince have, Gray is his own person. Vince, well, I, well, that's why I would ask you to Vince Gray is his own person. Vince Gray decided on him own to run for mayor. Well, if Mayor Finchie had talked to him mm -hmm. once a month, he wouldn't have run. Yeah. But he well, wouldn't I, talk I to him at all. I don't agree with that either. Well. Uh, see, see Finchie and Vince's problem were deeper than just the two people. Uh, mayor Finchie didn't understand the need to have the co-opted relationship right. between the council, not just the right. chairman of the but city council. Mr. Mayor. And, and he lost touch with the people. Let's too. go back to criticizing yeah. Kojo. I no, like no, 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 right. Mr. Mr. Mayor. I, I, want, I, want, I want Kojo to apologize for that, that outrageous. Well, he didn't write the headline. Uh, not the headline, but the substance of it, where he took 31 years of, of public service and said, Two former disgraced mayors comparing me to Swap James. There's no comparison between that. I went to uh, prison for six months on a personal situation that had nothing to do with the government. And so he ought to get off of it. He perpetuates it. I was shocked at him when he did it. I'm shocked at him now. And I want an apology Mr. from him. Mr. Mayor, before I make He's that apology, allow me to try to broaden the discussion because in that article and now the point I was making is that perception is everything. When I talked about the Barry revolution in that article, I specifically said that what Marion Barry was able to do was to bring jobs and contracts that were in those days unavailable to African Americans to, to make them available to African Americans. That was, in large measure, the essence of the Barry Revolution. The broader point I was wanting to make, and you said earlier in the discussion, I was thoughtful, I was trying to be thoughtful again, and I'd like to hear your thinking on this. The broader point I was trying to make is that gentrification throughout history has been controversial. And when that gentrification involves the United States of America without troubled racial history, it becomes volatile. And that volatility is what we experience here in this election. It seems to me that what's going on in this city are that affluent black, black, affluent whites are replacing poor blacks in many parts of the city. There's a great deal of resentment about that. The problem of governing the city now has to be on the one hand, how you broaden the tax base of the city, which means accepting the entry of more affluent whites into the city, and at the same time, have racial harmony in the city. How do you see Vincent Gray meeting that challenge? Also, well, there are affluent African-Americans who are moving into the city, too. 
Yeah, well, gentrification just, is not just a racial white thing. I mean, there are people. That's, of, so traditionally, gentrification has been a problem because right. it meant different classes of it's people right. it's, it's coming people with together, money to one replace people without, without money. You throw in the racial aspect of right. that, it becomes volatile, and the perception of Marion Barry, true or not, is that Marion Barry tends to stoke racial fires. Well, you got to stop that talk, too, because I don't. What I do say is that I welcome new people into the city, but I don't want long-term residents displaced. That's a How do you do that? How do you do that is by having policies of home ownership that subsidizes those who need subsidy. Gentrification can only take place when they're renters. If you look at Shaw, this we've been is where I for 20 years. We've been gentrified. It's because white homeowners or those, I mean, property owners have decided to take their property back from the renters, renovate them, sometimes stay in them, and sometimes sell them. And that is what the base of their problem is. So you try to do home I take, take Ward 8, 23% home ownership. Uh, that ought to be a high priority of any administration, which is my administration or Vincent Gray's administration, and do that. So what I'm pleading for, for you members of the media to stop perpetuating these false perceptions about what we are about. The basic problem in this city, which Vincent Gray's going to tackle because he cares deeply about the city, is the one city. That's, that's a social, political relationship that goes on. But Vincent Gray only got 25% of the white vote when he ran for chairman. And Marion Barry was not around. I was running for my own my own seat. He was running against mm -hmm. Kathy Patterson, yeah. who had been the Ward 3 councilman, yeah, councilman. for That's 12 right. years. So I wish you all stopped that. The issue here is economic. The it, issue here is how do you get economic development going, get more gap closing of economics. And the people in Ward 4, the, up, the middle-income people in Ward 4 black, don't have much of a problem related to affluent or even non-affluent white people. That you go to those social parties, Tom, you see I'm invited all, to a few. All, all, all the time. It's at the lower end of the spectrum that you have the animosity, have the, the dis, 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 disgust with the system, disgust with the situation, and you all keep talking race. I don't talk race. I talk equity. I talk equality. I talk parity. I talk economic gaps being closed.